Welcome everyone to the 2023 AMA Alliance Leadership Summit. I'm Rachel Kunish, and I am honored to be serving as your president this year. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you will, just mute yourself to kind of keep the background noise at bay. But of course, feel free to unmute if you want to speak anytime. Um, and also, if you can, rename yourself and include your state in your name. So like for me to rename, I click on three little dots and then there's an option to rename. So if you have any um, issues doing that, we can try to guide you through that, but it's kind of nice to know where everyone's coming from. So I appreciate that. So first off, I'd like to introduce you guys to Sherry Morrow. And thank you, Sherry. Sherry is um, serving as our all member Zoom call chair as part of the events council. Um, she's out of Vegas and um, I'm just really thankful that she's helping me with this. And Sherry, go ahead and introduce yourself if you don't mind. Thank you, Rachel. So yes, I'm in Las Vegas. I'm currently co-president on the State Alliance with Wendy Agarwal, who's also on the call. And I've been a member of the County Alliance um, and on the board on the county here for five years. This is actually my first year not being on the, on the board, but focusing on the state this year. <laughs> Thank you. Great, thank you, thank you. And so um, Sherry and I are working on the um, upcoming all member Zoom calls and we would always welcome more people to join us. So if you find that you would like to join our team, let me or Sherry know and we'd be happy to, um, to, to have you on the, the, the planning committee for the all member calls. Um, next, I'd like to introduce members of our board who are on the call. Uh, starting with Pat Klecki, our president-elect. And Pat, take it away. Say a few words to everyone. Because I, 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 you know, some of you, this may be all familiar, but I, I'm seeing some new names and faces. So I think it's good if we, you know, introduce everyone to the leadership team. So go ahead, Pat. Hi, Pat Klecki from Utah. And I was surprised and excited to be nominated and elected president-elect for this year. So I, this full year, I expect to absorb absolutely as much as I possibly can to be as prepared as I can be to step into those wonderful shoes <laughs> that are being so ably filled this year by Rachel. <laughs> so um, I am here. I am also admitting people. Sherry and I are taking turns, I think, kind of getting that taken care of for the day. Um, if at any point you feel like, wow, I am just so excited about national and I would love to pursue being involved at that level, fill out a willingness to serve form. I'll take a look at it. I can get back to you. I would love to have everybody involved who's interested. And I will stop talking. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. So the, the next person really needs no introduction, but that's our immediate past president, um, Jacqueline. Quinn, who I believe is on. Jacqueline, can you Hi. introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to see everyone. Uh, Jacqueline from Las Vegas. Um, just, uh, I hope everybody's having a great summer. We are at like 113 here, so we're all moving a little slow. Um, but I'm incredibly excited for this year. I think that um, there is a spot for each and every one of you, and it's really a, um, a uh, reciprocal relationship. You have so much knowledge and so much talent uh, yourselves that we would love to learn from you as well. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Uh, next up, I want to introduce my right-hand gal, and that's uh, Dinah Goldenberg, who's serving as our secretary this year. And she is doing a great job of keeping all of the board in line. So Dinah, do you have a minute to introduce Hi. yourself? Welcome. Um, thanks, Rachel. So I'm currently in Nevada, previously North Dakota. I've been involved. I, I decided to call myself a veteran 
member for over 20 years. I was state president and local president in North Dakota and served on the national board for six years previously and my seven years on the AHEI board, two of which as chair. Um, and I'm currently serving as secretary at three levels of the alliance, my county, my state, and national. So I guess secretary seems to be my role. So if you <laughs> have any questions, if you have any questions that relate to the secretary portfolio, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks, Dinah. And next up, uh, Nancy Fody, who's serving as our treasurer, which is really Hi. a big lift. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Good to see you all. I'm from Michigan. I have been a member of the Alliance for over 30 years. Um, looking forward to handling your money this year. And if you have any questions, don't feel free to ask me. No problem. Thanks, Nancy. Um, I see Ron. Ron Jaggers, you're on. And Ron <laughs> is our, uh, oh, I believe, yes, he's there, is our uh, membership chair on the, for the uh, director for the membership council. Hey, everybody. Ron Jaggers from South Carolina. I have the, uh, I, I am, I'm so privileged to again be your director of membership. Uh, this is my second year on the board. Been involved at many different levels. I've been a, uh, a local alliance president for three years, and uh, I'm not anymore, but I used to be, and been, served on the state level at various uh, positions and just so privileged to be able to serve on the board and serve you people. And if anyone is interested in, our council is already into the mode and we're already doing things and we're already really busy. And, but if there's any interest of any of y'all to, to serve on the membership committee, I would love to hear from you. So good luck everybody. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. Uh, and I believe Rick Knapp is on. Rick is our um, director over the Events Council. And so, Rick, if you want to say a few words. Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm Rick Knapp from Oklahoma. Um, although we are now in our, our home. I'm from Colorado. We're in our home in Colorado, Jacqueline. I'm sorry, it's 104 there. It's a brisk 62 degrees right now here with wonderful weather. And uh, yeah, this is my first year on the board. Happy to, to be here. And I'm trying to fill the very big shoes of Mary Beth Ellison, which I don't think many people can, certainly not me. But anyway, uh, we'll try. So if you have any events, things, uh, make sure and get a hold of me. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd also like to introduce. Um, Suzanne Manning. Suzanne is chair uh, is the chair of the Board of Trustees for our Alliance Health Education Initiative, our um, nonprofit partner. Suzanne, are you on? I am. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm uh, Suzanne Manning from South Carolina and have been part of the Alliance since, um, I don't know, 2005 and have served in all different levels, state, local, and national. Um, <clears throat> and I'm currently the board chair of AHEI, which is the nonprofit arm of the Medical Alliance. And um, we collect uh, and raise funds and then distribute grants every year to um, projects that are community health related. So, yeah, this is great. Thanks, Rachel. Great. Thanks, Suzanne. And uh, I have a couple of directors who are on vacation and out of reach, out of the country. Um, Kirby Sheridan is the Director for Communications Council and Libby White from Texas is Director for uh, Programs Council. So um, we'll miss them. We are recording this, so they'll be able to go back and review it and hear you know, all of the uh, discussion we have today. And um, finally, uh, Beth Irish uh, has been appointed our chair for the new council that we have, the Advocacy and Legislation Council. And she's um, in, in recovering from surgery. So I don't, I didn't see Beth join. I know she registered, but um, just keep positive thoughts for her as she's recovering and uh, we'll miss her on this call. But again, she'll be able to, to listen in. So um, I've seen some new names and faces on the call. So 
If you, this is your first time joining an AMA Alliance all member call or a Zoom call, can you like give a reaction of a thumbs up or a smiley face or something? Because I think I saw some new people and, um, and I just wanted to say, you know, welcome and thank you for joining. We hope you'll come back again to, to our future um, all member calls. With that, I think I'll go ahead and launch into um, our topic for today, which is our leadership summit. So I asked all of you for input on a question. What is the one resource you need from the AMA Alliance to be a successful state, local Alliance leader? So thank you to those who did take time to respond. We had, um, I looked at 49 responses. And what I did was trying to re, uh, group those responses into categories that we could then start having a discussion about. So I'd like to share these responses with you in kind of rank order. So the highest ranking first, and we'll try to delve into that one first. I wanna let you know about existing resources that I see that are available, and then also entertain your thoughts on additional resources that we could leverage that may be in existence, or if there are areas that you still need development on, or even things that are working well for you at your state or county alliance. Um, if you do have a question or comment, you can go ahead and unmute and speak out. You can raise your hand. You can drop it in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna have Sherry monitor the chat, so we'll make sure we deal with that as we need to. So again, I want to be uh, interactive with this. I want it to be a conversation. So please, I do really want your thoughts. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch here. All right. So you'll see, Your, uh, some beautiful artwork by Jennifer Bruce. <laughs> I have to acknowledge her because we, she is a gem. So um, yes, this is our leadership summit. And um, if you were at the annual meeting, you, you kind of heard the theme of a be a catalyst. So she wound in a little bit of a chemistry thing here. We're bonding our alliances, right? The AMA Alliance is that portal that connects our local and state alliances all together. So the first, uh, thing I want to kind of share is some of the feedback that we received. First thing that was needed as a resource, education, leadership training, technology help. Secondly, information on successful initiatives to increase or maintain membership. Third, filling the leadership vacuum, right? Ways to encourage members to take on that leadership role. Fourth, mentoring new leaders, giving them affirmation, knowledge sharing. Methods to convey our relevance and significance of the Alliance at all three levels. Someone requested a brochure with the 10 reasons to belong. Project ideas, giving steps and results ways to connect the local with regional and national focus, concept of enlisting state and county medical society support, clear directives, and virtual real-time meeting access. So that's what came out of the survey. Now I'd like to delve into first the education leadership training technology help. So as you know, last year, Jacqueline, blazed the path for giving us some great resources to develop members as board members, as well as individual leaders. And that is through the board bootcamp and Confluence 2.0. Now that the annual meeting and the um, leadership academy has uh, kind of wrapped up for last year, those recordings are available on the website. So you can go back and review board bootcamp if you want to you know, learn more about like bylaws, uh, finance, any of those topics. And then the confluence where we learned, you know, our LinkedIn uh, glow up, 
uh, your communication style, that kind of thing. It's all out there on the website. So those are great, great resources. We also have an online academy. And part of that online academy is the Project Bank. And I know this year we really, really want to shore up that Project Bank, populate it uh, with the content that everyone wants to see, maybe develop a standard template so that if you want to go learn about a project, it's easy to navigate and, um, and you'll be able to you know, get the information you need. Um, thirdly, we do have our all member Zoom calls and I would hope there's at least an educational component to these calls. But what I want to know is as I build, right, another, we're gonna continue to do a virtual leadership event, I'm calling it. Um, right now, I'm not planning to have a separate boot camp and like a confluence that kind of do a mashup that may touch a little bit on some of the, the um, board elements, maybe focus more on organizational development and still leadership of the person development. But as we build this, I'd like to know what topics are you guys interested in? What are you seeing out there that you think would be really valuable for you as members and that we can roll out to everyone else? And here, please, I want this to be interactive. I hope folks will kind of jump in and let us know what you would like to see. Anyone? This is Ann Sambara from Wisconsin. Um, hi. I would really like to see maybe how to get new members who are in the community. I find that um, especially younger members are more private with their information and the hospitals are more private with their information too. So it's really hard to find people and reach out to people and get them to come to things. And then when they do come, um, most of our members are retired. So um, then it's kind of hard for them to see the value in coming to something and meeting people of their that are in the same stage of their life. And then so it's kind of just dying off. And you're young. I am young. So that's Ish. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think your uh, story is probably common. So I think that, yeah, we need to, we need to see how we can, what we can do as national to help with our, with our local alliances facing that, um, you know, kind of division of, of, of age. I mean, the alliance is here for everyone through all stages um, in their journey. So you're going to have some young and some some more experienced uh, members. But yes, I, I appreciate that. Uh, anything else as far as leadership training that you think you would like to see being developed? Rachel, I think it would be mainly, I know that I could have used, when I was president of my local, I could have really used some guidelines on that, but how to set up a website, how to do a newsletter, how to get the communication out that you need. And I think that could possibly help with what Ann was saying, uh, if you can sort of give us some communication tools, maybe that we could use. And because I've heard so many people say, I don't know how to set up a website or I don't know where to even start with a newsletter. So those are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. That sounds like it would fit under our, maybe our online academy. I mean, we could also do a virtual because that's the kind of thing too. I went, I'm thinking about like, what's the best format for delivering some of this information? How do we get it out there, right? Um, it seems like everything now you watch a video. <laughs> right? Everybody wants to go to YouTube and just say, how do I do this? That's, that's your go-to place. So, um, cause that's the thing you can create content, but really do, how do you get it to the end user? That, that's a um, challenge. And, um, Deb, Deb Brownstone, you have your hand up. I, I can see you just cause you're at the top, but you're muted. Mm 
Rachel, Deb dropped her uh, comment in the chat. Oh, okay. So let's see, Sherry, what's the chat say? <laughs> my, my technology person. <laughs> Uh, it says she's on mute. Okay, uh, have meetups for national and Chicago meeting uh, during AA. Sorry, sorry, excuse me. Have meetups for national in Chicago during AMAA meeting might attract more members of mixed ages. So wherever it is that we hold a meeting, maybe do do meetups. We did have those uh, group gatherings, like the. The welcome reception and things like that. Do you mean yeah. other than that, like uh, to go out and do an activity? Sherry, she I means during she means. the AMA annual yeah. meeting that's in Chicago, oh, not our you. annual meeting. So thank when you. we have representatives there, then she's saying we should try to have a meet up. Oh, yes, that makes sense. Thanks. So, anything else on? Um, specific things that you're looking for for leadership training or for organizational training, like any other topics that, that come to mind or anything you've seen that's been amazing that we need to make sure we share with our members. Because, you know, like I said, last year was awesome. I feel like we have a, I have a, a you know, a, a challenge ahead of me to, to um, be able to bring such great content to y'all. So if you can have any other ideas or any other things you think you'd like to learn, let me know. And do you find, um, I guess if you look at our, if you look at the website, if you find that something is hard to find, let me know. Because we really tried to redesign the website to make it much more navigable and minimize the number of clicks to get to information. So if you're finding that it is difficult, let us know and we'll see what we can do. But we, we've really tried to, you know, work on that um, the previous year to try to make that more approachable for everyone and, and useful. Okay. Rachel, um, yes. I have a comment about hey, Chris. one of the things that I found really helpful this past year was um, information on how to present yourself in a video or a blog or whatever, especially a visual format um, where we had Portia, I forget her last name, um, talking about some of that stuff. And anyway, uh, more of that, if more and more information is going to be delivered through visual social media, and I, and I think it probably is going that way, um, just a kind of follow-ups or continuation of how to, how to go about that. I mean, I'm really old. I have never done a TikTok video or even a video <laughs> on Instagram going, Oh, here's what's happening at our alliance. Uh, that, it would feel really awkward to me, but um, maybe because I've never done it. Oh, maybe maybe we should do a workshop and everybody has to do one. <laughs> well, <homework. laughs> this is your homework. <laughs> Listen, before and after. Uh, no, I agree, Chris, because I'm with you. Uh, it, it is that is definitely, um, I think, an area a lot of us could use. And, and uh, some of our younger members maybe like totally like they've got it, but I agree that would be, um, I'm, I'm hearing that. So I'll work on that. Any other thoughts? Okay. Hearing that, I'm gonna move on and we'll see where we get any other crossover here. Okay, so this, uh, is always the nut we're trying to crack, right? Membership. So learning about successful membership initiatives. And really, if we could leverage our Facebook groups more to get more interaction and, you know, kind of organic conversation, I think we could learn from each other on those Facebook groups or on the, the there's the members only Facebook group. Of course, our public facing one really is more um, focused on getting our brand out. But if we would use that members only Facebook, that could be a way that we could share ideas. Um, we could also use even Project Bank, right, to use examples of how people did a membership initiative. 
because uh, I kind of look, I think um, Jacqueline, you know, gave us a little bit of a um, teaser into knowing with the Vegas and with, you know, with her alliance, how they really reinvented themselves. So that kind of thing, if it doesn't work for every organization, right? But if we can, an alliance can take one component that works for them, that may help all of us along the, along the, the way. Um, so one, you know, if we could benchmark those thriving alliances, folks that are really, really getting out there and thriving because they are there. And, and I just have to tell you, people reach out and say, hey, I'd like to start an alliance or can we reinvigorate this alliance? So there's interest out there to reinvigorate, to even start new alliances. Um, right now, I feel like we may not have everything they need to start. So that's where I feel like we need to, as a national alliance, make sure we have that toolkit or those assemble that toolkit to be able to um, you know, start an alliance, or reinvigorate alliance. But I also think really, if we can find the areas where things are working for alliances, we can share that. One thing, um, when I was brainstorming, I have to, I have to um, give Julie Newman <laughs> a little nod here, because uh, what I was talking, Julie's gonna be um, our facilitator for our board retreat. And we were kind of chatting, you know, thinking about it. And she laid the, uh, or planted the seed for this, Leadership Summit, but we talked about possibly forming a work group. And Julie, do you want to comment on that at all? Like, tell us about what a group work group involves, or um, I don't know if you want to chime in a little bit because maybe that's kind of like a way we could organizationally get some of these things going. Sure. Hang on a second. I I may I may have to bend down a second because I I have a five month old adorable puppy who is still in chewing and eating anything he finds on the floor. Come here, come here. And I'm not quite sure what he has, but sounds like a piece of, like a wrapper <laughs> that my son left in his bedroom. Um, so yeah, so a work group is a very, very small and targeted group of individuals that are brought together to work on exactly one issue. A little bit different from a task force. A task force has a little bit broader um, um, a broader assignment or broader charge, both of these are, um, are very much um, time limited. So a work group may exist for four months or six months. And in, in this case, it would be just a work group that would study the best practices of uh, the thriving alliances and perhaps bring a report forward to the membership committee uh, or the membership council, I'm sorry, um, at, at just bring a report forward. That's all they're responsible for doing is producing a report. They don't have to do anything else with that. So that is like a, a work group or a study group. I think, uh, does anyone have any questions with regard to what that means? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go back now to try and figure out what he's got. <laughs> okay, all righty. Um... Does anybody want to share anything on the on any initiatives they've done that have been successful or any other challenges? I, I think we're I think we're seeing we're turning the tide on membership. I think we're seeing um, a bunch of new members that are young. That's kind of what I'm seeing. So uh, you know, building on the momentum from last year, I'm, I'm feeling really positive to, about that. But again, I want to make sure that we support all of our alliances and that they feel good. And any other, any other needs? Well, because, okay. Yeah. So is there a mechanism in place? I'm kind of thinking there is. Uh, we have gained new members in the National Alliance and they all live somewhere. And so is there a mechanism currently in place that connects them with whoever the closest local or state alliance might be? Or is it just, are they just put out there and then it's up to those alliances to read the new member list and try and find them? Um, uh, Rachel, you want me to approach yes, that? Yes, Ron, I was going to say, do you want to take that one, Ron? Uh, we actually are doing a portion of what you're saying already. Our re we have regional representatives. We have four that are across the country. 
uh, in different regions. And one of the things that is in our seven touch process of a new member is they will get an email from that regional representative that will reach out to them as their regional rep to answer any questions. And let in those emails, many times they will let them know that they have a local alliance there or they have a state alliance in their state. Um, it's a little bit difficult for them to if they're in a local because with the exception of the map that uh, that was created uh, two years ago, it's really hard to, for us to really know what local alliances are around, which could be a good project to have a list of all of our local alliances and could be a, a good resource for us. But we are doing a part of what, what you're saying, Chris. Uh, they're also reached out by Ann uh, Sanford, who is our new member coordinator, and she'll send them a lot of information. Uh, also, they're touched by the chair of the uh, representatives. We reach out to them on Facebook. We reach out to them on uh, the link. So there's def definitely some sources that we are uh, that we are trying to do that. So uh, what I'm what I'm hearing is mostly, and and again, it may be because of the information available, is giving that new member information to reach out to an already established alliance, which might be more intimidating than if you could contact the local alliance and go, hey, did you know somebody, this happened in our um, alliance and you know, it didn't follow through, the guy ended up moving within six months or a year, but somebody from national said, hey, did you know you have a new national member in Lake County? And here's his contact, his email, and you should reach out to him. I mean, I think that will be maybe more effective. But again, as you said, you don't have all the information from all county or parish alliances, although technically that's supposed to be filled out by each state yeah. and county president each yeah. year. You know, it doesn't always happen. And we are right in the middle of that project. Uh, we have really been pushing for all the states to go online and update their leadership uh, people because we have actually, we have a database that the regional reps use uh, that will list all those. And then we also have a directory that's on our website that AMC source keeps updated. So you can also get that information on directory if they have turned in that information. Those of you are probably laughing, some of y'all, because y'all know I've really been pushing states and local counties to uh, county alliances to really get that information into us. And I am very proud to say that South Carolina is full. We have got our state and we have all three of our county alliances information on our directory and also in our database. So encourage your state and encourage your local alliances to go on the website and update that information. That's one of the best ways that we can go about, you know, keeping that information. So I, I just have to say recently we had, um, I was looking at our members only Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry, on the, wait, no, was it members only? Yes, it was a request to join our members only um, from someone in Arizona. And we were able to connect that person with a local alliance. So there are, you know, there are some, you know, you want to be able to make these huge changes in membership, but at the end of the day, it's one by one. It's that personal connection, probably a lot of times that gets that person. So um, any other comments? Rachel? Oh, Sana, yeah. Sana, Hi. yes. Hi, Sana Sala um, from Missouri, uh, state president. Um, I would like to go back to the, uh, just tie in the uh, physician family survey that was conducted and presented by the Sotil Center. Uh, and I know Kendra is on the call here. Uh, maybe tie in some of those, because of the results, I do remember that the, of the 1404 survey submitted, I have the numbers here, 265 were AMA members. And of the responses, there were 1143 were non-members. How can we detect those who were non-members and grab them 
is there a way to de detect those and you know uh, track them back to their states I mean, that's kind of like detective work, but that's another avenue of seeing if they are, they have local and track them and attract them to join their uh, respective county and state uh, alliances. That was like just since we're already in the works of this survey, maybe do more digging into that. So, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Rachel, can I just answer yes. Sana's question yes, real quick? Yes, jump on in. Um, <laughs> thank you. So not, that would have been a great idea. However, for the survey to be um, anonymous, we could not have any identifying information associated with those answers. But what this did is it opened up the alliance to those people who didn't. Now our job is to then create further con contacts with them through social media or the same channels that we used and invite them again to interact with us. So the survey was just the beginning piece of that. So more people have heard about it, but it was anonymous so we could keep the integrity of the data because when you put your name and your address and where you live with something, the information that you give will be radically different <laughs> than what you would if it was anonymous. So oh, for the results to be I mean, yes. pure, they needed to be anonymous. Right, but but it's just such a rich number of people who responded, which kind of is, uh, yeah, which a, tells a, us they want yes. to interact with us, and so we need yes. to keep reaching out to them, and then they will provide that information to us. Right, right. Thank you, Kendra. Yeah, yeah. And then I think I see, I see both Jacqueline. Jacqueline, do you want to chime in? Thank you. Yeah, so every time we talk about membership, I want to bring you guys back to something that I try to hammer home all last year through my county leadership, through my state leadership is this. So many times we're focused on attracting people to our organization. And what I keep wanting to remind people is if they come to the organization and they have a bad experience, it's actually worse than if they never came to the organization at all, because then you've lost them forever. And so remember, you know, we have a county, state, national tiered system. Uh, some don't because they don't have a state alliance or some have fewer county alliances. But for our model to work, each level has to do their job. We as a national alliance should not be the direct link to county alliances if there is a state alliance, right? So we really all have to support each other so we can work smarter, not harder. So what we have to do is if we can train the state alliance to function efficiently and continue to pass information down to county alliances and have that free flow of information both directions, that's how we're successful. But right now, look at how your county works. Look at how your state works. Let's just say we were able to convert a thousand members at the national level and all of a sudden contact your state and say, hey, we've got 50 people that want to join and they're ready to get started. Are they going to come to your first meeting and is it going to be run efficiently? Are you going to have your policies in place, be able to plug them right in? Or are they going to come in and you're going to have a meeting where everybody's like, OK, now what do we want to do? So I sort of want to say, get your house in order before you invite people over, right? Because that way you can ensure that not only do they have a great experience, but you set them up for success. That's my <laughs> two cents. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. And Mindy, are you, is your hand up or did we, I think we may have lost her. No, my hand's still up. I'm going to lower it. Okay. Hi. I, I don't know what I did to my, my, um, oh my God. Okay. I got the lower now. Um, I don't know what happened to my picture. I messed it up. But anyway, that's okay. We can hear you. Um, I got a couple of points if I could uh, quickly go through them. First, uh, what Jacqueline was saying was great. However, we have a terrible state um, board, whatever. I was, not to boast, but I was state president for a while, county president again and again. And um, so they're unresponsive. They're even unresponsive to the county. And I don't know what to do about that, but that's neither here nor there. But 
we have been fortunate because Arizona is such a mobile area that there was one gal who wound up on our board who, who came back and she's still a, a member, a young gal, who found us in the, uh, who found the AMA Alliance in, in the index of a book that she was reading about first year residences. And that was, that was exciting. And then she contacted the AMA Alliance and they got back with me and et cetera, uh, which worked out great. Recently, like you said, uh, we had a bit of a glitch because uh, for some reason, Arizona, even though I, I updated all the county information and the state information was correct, it didn't make it into the database. Um, I didn't check recently, but I'm hoping that it has made it. <laughs> and um, the, the yes, Cal Mindy, County it has. I think I responded to you in the chat, but yes, your oh, uh, Arizona okay. and the county are both on the directory and on the database. Bless you, Ron. <laughs> Love you, Mindy. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, shoot. There was another comment that I was going to make in respect to that. But anyway, uh, so that's that's good. But uh, yeah, and there was a glitch uh, because of the changeover um, that was uh, messed up with the joining of Facebook. It took her like three or four tries. But it worked. She's on Facebook. So on the Facebook group. But um, thank you. And uh, I'm really into the um, digital uh, communications, which I never was in the past. And Nancy can attest to that. Um, but because of the pandemic and our membership is mostly older, we're getting new members. Uh, we're really concerned about the pandemic. So we do a lot of virtual meetings. Good, 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 good. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and move on if you guys are good. Let's look at this next area. And this is also related, I think, to membership, but feeling a leadership vacuum. And <laughs> I kind of said, well, what do we have out there? Maybe we have some articles on it. We can share that in the Facebook groups, but perhaps we need to be looking at alternative models, right? Why aren't people stepping up to lead? Is it too much work? Maybe you need to be more flexible. So this may be an area where, again, we find alliances that have simplified or done something that makes it easier to, to you know, fill leadership. And I think that might be the, the, the kind of thing that, a, again, a work group may say, this has worked well here. Let's roll that out to other alliances. Um, has anybody found something that works that they want to share or, um, you know, with our, I'll just say, I'm going to put out there with my local alliance, right? We, I was, gosh, county president somewhere in the 2000s. I know I stayed in 2010, but our local alliance, you know, we had basically continued to do all of our service things, but we really stopped like meeting socially. We went at the pandemic, everything shut down and we took like a two year two, three year hiatus. So um, just recently, just this last year, we just started getting, we did a couple social events and people enjoyed it. And it's like, you know what? It's simple. We still do like one project that we do. We have simplified. We are still keeping people, you know, connected. We still need to get people to pay their dues. I'm just gonna say they're happy to show up, but it's like, now I need your money. Because that is part of running, you know, an alliance organization. Um, but we've kind of just simplified and said, you know, people do still want to connect. We have one project. It may maybe right now we're social. And I think you guys sometimes you have to give yourself the grace to do that. You know that maybe we can't do all things that we at one time did. We may have to simplify. I don't know. Does anybody else have ideas? Because we're we're trying it locally, and I, I I'd like to say, ooh, it's it's smashing success. It's like we're making progress. That's that's all I can say. It's Suzanne Manning. Hey, Suzanne. Um, I'm going to put Julie Newman on the spot. <laughs> as long as her puppy's not chewing something. Um, 
she could probably speak to how she helped streamline a lot of stuff that we do with AGI, uh, whether it was online or just uh, using different companies to help receive donations, uh, create a database, creating a website. Julie, you want to speak to any of that? Well, I couldn't have done it without you because you were the one who brought Give Lively to us. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think, um, you know, one of the, the things, if you can find a, you know, a, a, a free or close to free or relatively inexpensive platform that would help you to manage a lot of your functions, then it might be worth an investment. Um, well, and, and, I'll, and I'll stop. I'll interrupt just really quickly. If you're not familiar with Give Lively, you need to check it out. Um, Give Lively is a platform that receives donations. They are specific to nonprofits. It was funded several years ago by an individual so that you don't pay for their service. You still have to pay for credit card fees, but it is an absolutely free platform once you submit your nonprofit status, and then you are able to use that for all different kinds of things. But it is a, it's a really great resource for uh, alliances, nonprofits, you know, with whomever you're working. So yeah, go ahead, Julie. Right. And you have to be a 501c3. Correct. Um, so, but but, you know, there are other, you know, website, you know, I, this came up earlier about building a, a website, how to, um, how to leverage social media. I think that there are ways to, there, there are platforms out there. We, uh, HPI uses Squarespace, T really not expensive at all, really inexpensive, about a couple hundred dollars a year for the website. It's all, you, you manage it, you do it all, uh, include, that includes the domain registration. But, you know, think about, you, there's so many ways you can, um, there's so many uh, facilities out there, um, platforms out there that are free or low cost. Google Workspace is another one that's available. I think uh, Jennifer Bruce um, started me on that path, but it ends up being ways to streamline your processes and make things easier in the long run. There are learning curves. Don't, don't you know, don't think you're gonna know how to do it at, right at the beginning. There are learning curves, but there are ways that all of this becomes interactive with Instagram and Facebook. I don't know so much about TikTok as I don't have TikTok. I get I receive them from my daughter all the time, but Instagram and, and Facebook, um, a lot of these integrate with them. So there are great ways. There are ways that just have to be um, um, researched how to bring it all together. And, you know, maybe that's something that would uh, be built out in, you know, the, the communications tools. Um, because I think that's, you know, if you can make a, a, a leader's job a little bit easier, that would encourage them to perhaps take on the responsibility. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. I think we can, we can leverage some of the, um, the learnings from AHEI. That would be great. Anyone else? Rachel, there's a lot of good info that's been popping into the chat. So Great. I just want to make sure that everybody is catching those. Um, or do you need me to, to summarize? Oh, sure. go, go on through it, yeah. Okay. So um, Bud says he feels that uh, the biggest challenge is that um, to recruit from potential membership pool we've not tapped yet. Uh, currently, two, mem two million in the U.S. Deborah has uh, she spoke up. She spoke of the national membership at a physician party recently that had 150 people in attendance. Uh, Mindy, they have a book club in Arizona, and Kelly recommends Ziffy as another free platform uh, that you don't have to be a nonprofit to use, and. Uh, Chris, they drastically simplified their bylaws, which um, has helped people to really understand um, their organization. And uh, she wants to know, does the National Alliance still offer a bare bones template for bylaws? Maybe before we go on, you should answer that. 
but she's um, also they've focused almost strictly on their endow scholarship for health tech students at a local community college. Um, And Deborah Bronson, they've done something similar. And then Susan Manning dropped in the Give Lively um, link for it, her one. Okay. Great. Well, and really a lot of this is not about necessarily solving some of these things today. It's about sharing the information and then giving this, using this feedback for us as a national board and uh, do, you know, kind of figuring out what are some things we need to do you know, in this upcoming year? So thank you for that. Uh, mentoring new leaders, also related to the previous one. Um, I mean, currently we can connect you with a board member, connect you with a state leader, that we can at least try to make that, that connection for you. Um, but one thing that uh, I was, would like to get up and going this year is this leader mentoring committee uh, and Sue Ann Greco who's on the call has agreed to, to chair that. And basically that's to kind of use this rich resource we have in some of our past state president or not state past uh, uh, national presidents and also maybe some folks who have key, um, key skills that we may be able to share with state and county leaders who need some help. So I don't know, Sue Ann, we're, we're still developing it, but Sue Ann, did you want to make any comments? <laughs> oh, I think, just to, I'm hoping this just to, be a good resource. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and yeah, we want people up there who feel like they have subject matter, you know, expertise in like the website stuff, the marketing, um, Facebook, um, putting together a newsletter, all these things that we've talked about on this call. If you feel like, you know, you really have a skill in that, which you'd love to share, let us know. Uh, but we'll also be contacting uh, um, previous or past AMA Alliance presidents um, to help with leadership, um, you know, help problem solve. Basically what we want to do is help problem solve. You know, um, we're, we don't have all the knowledge, but maybe together with you, we can help you figure it out. So thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I do hope we can do something there to, to help folks. Um, and any comments on this? I, I Like I said, if you have a specific need or something, reach out to, to me, reach out to Sue Ann. We will kind of develop a way for you to be able to, to uh, uh, submit a need on the website that'll all be developed. So we'll watch for that. We'll promote it. And I know we are, I'm gonna be trying try to be vigilant of time here. So let me see if we wanna discuss anything on conveying rele relevance and significance. And here, you know, someone brought up the idea of maybe having a brochure with the 10 reasons. I know on, on Facebook, we had kind of done a membership promotion, the top 10 reasons, and that came out. Um, we also, as a national alliance, I think we'll look on, look as we have developed a um, updated strategic plan, we'll wanna update our RAC card so we can kind of bring that um, message to everyone as far as what the email is about. Any other thoughts or needs on relevant significance, how we can convey that or anything that anyone's been successful with um, on the call? And I think here, a lot of times it's actions. <laughs> Actions really speak, right? <laughs> Seeing us in action. I don't remember who asked for the brochure, but we can look at that. See if there's something that can be co-branded with, with like a local alliance or state alliance. Gives us some things to, to work on. And another area was project ideas. So again, currently we have Project Bank, which I really do hope to shore up and, and provide that resource for everyone. Um, also, we can look at the award winners from last year 
and learn more about that. Cause I definitely, I've had people reach out and say, Hey, how do I figure out more about that mental health kit that, you know, they had done um, for the, in, in, down in Greenville, right? So that's an area that I think we can share um, some good projects on. I think we can do more to collaborate with AGI, with all the grant, yeah, with all the grant winners, we really should be learning more about what they did, how did they do it? Um, and also setting, you know, with health initiatives, let's see what we can do there. Um, I, I think they're really, we have tons of projects. It's just getting it all gathered together and finding the best way to share it. So we will work on that. <laughs> Any other comments on that one? Uh, this one I think is fairly a uh, well-defined, whoops. Oh, I just went crazy. Um, so yeah, this is an area I think we can all um, rally around a little more defined. And then just other things kind of came up, the catch-all um, ways to connect local with regional national focus and um, maybe enlisting the support of your state and county medical societies. It's interesting, sometimes they actually reach out to us and want support, but you know, we, we may be able to leverage our, our medical societies. I know when we were um, in Illinois for the AMA meeting, um, it happened that Jackie Alford's husband is the medical society president for their state. So like, is there a way that, you know, some of those connections you can use to try to help reinvigorate an alliance or something like that? We just have to think about that. Um, virtual re real-time meeting access. I, is this like for the like for the annual meeting to make it more of a hybrid meeting. I'm not sure exactly what that was, but uh, we, can, we can look at that. That's something we've talked about doing as you know, right now, or la last year we did a, um, the virtual component, but, and then there was the in-person, but truly in-person is just in-person. If we're looking at trying to live stream something, that's like a whole nother level of technology and expense. We can think about it, but um, I'm hearing that, but we'd have to look at that. And it is now one o'clock. Are there any other things that you guys would like to throw out there or discuss? Um, I'm open. I mean, really for me, this has been um, good to hear your voices. And I think for the members of the board to hear your voices so that we go into our uh, retreat and strategic planning <laughs> session. In early, oh, look at, hey, Elspeth. Uh, you know, as we go into, um, into that session, we will be able to use some of this input and then see what we can do as a national board, as a national alliance to support our state and county alliances. 